Hello and welcome to Chit Chat and All That with me, Amanda Prouse. And me, Penny Domit. Thank you for joining us for your weekly dose of chatter, where we'll be talking about all the things that we usually discuss around this kitchen table. This very kitchen table, which I notice is dotted with crummage, Penny. It is. But it's it's from our own toast. It was. It's not like, you know, as it was last night, covered in fish finger crummage. Well, I had a little bit of toast with my butter. Do you know, I have to say... Your butter habit is getting slightly out of control. Well, I don't have I don't have toast very often because no. I know that the butter that I have on it is very bad for me. Well, although actually, if you're only having it occasionally, you've got to have what you want, right? Well, I just I like it's again very psychological. I have to butter right up to the corners. I did notice. So I over buttered, thinking I know she loves a bit of butter. A bit of butter. Bit of butter. Can't put a better bit of butter on your knife. Yeah. And then literally you took the butter and you re-buttered the yes. most minuscule of missing yes. edges yes. with a slab. Yeah. Because I like the butter to be so hard that it doesn't melt straight away. I noticed that I too. I need to see it. Simeon does that, which is yeah. weird. So you know those little pats that you get in like yeah, a, yeah. you know, like in a little chef when they give yeah. you a toast and put a pat of butter on top or a tea cake. Yes. Oh, love that. You had kind of the equivalent of maybe six of those extra <laughs> around the edge. I, Not I've judging. Got, I've got a tip for you. Have you? You, you, know those, you know those little those little butter pats that you get? Yes. And you get that when you, when you go to a restaurant or something and you have them. Sometimes if it's not a really good quality restaurant, they'll give them to you and they're hard. Yeah. And you think, well, how am I going to spread that on my butter? Right. Stab it with a fork. Yes. And then you squeeze it and it all comes out the little holes and then it spreads beautifully. Stop it. No, brilliant. When it's did you best, when did you learn this? Hack. Or sit on it. No. Oh no, I've tried that, but then Hold you get, it. You get very, very greasy trousers. <laughs> Uh, no, no one no, wants a greasy trouser. Stab it with a fork, right. and then squeeze it out onto your butter, onto okay. your bread, and then you can spread it really easily. I'm going to try it, Pat. yeah, it just works. for the sheer it joy works. of trying yes, it. Yes, it definitely works. Um, mind you, I am. I must say, I am so. I'm tired. You know, when you get tired, a little bit tired. Isn't that terrible when your friend comes in and the first thing she says to you is, "God, you look tired." It is. It must make you feel really bad. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, you you just, I mean, I just thought you did look like you hadn't slept for a week. Do you know, I have. I've just got, you know, when you're, I know it's all of our lives, isn't it? We're all plate spinning. We're all plate spinning while fire juggling, whilst running in a hamster wheel and the front door's ringing and someone's firing a gun over your head. It's like, literally, that's just our lives right now and it's a lot. But um, I know I'm tired because I received a rather important email on Monday uh, just gone, uh, inviting me to a meeting and a thing I've got to do. And I replied with, this is almost word for word, how lovely, delighted to accept this invitation. I really hope you don't see this email until Monday. Have a lovely weekend. Hope you're doing something fun and the weather stays fine. Amanda. And I sent it and I got in bed and I suddenly realised it wasn't Friday, it was Monday. <laughs> So I then had to, it's just honestly, I'm cringing as I'm remembering it. So I then had to go back onto my email, send another email going, oh, hi, Amanda here. Although she already knows that because she's seen the email. Just realised I said, have a lovely weekend and I hope you don't see this till Monday. And it is Monday, not Friday. I genuinely didn't know what day of the week it was. (laughs) And I'm thinking, this person who's asking me to do something quite grown up and sensible. And there's me sending that back proving I don't even know what day of the week it is. What a klutz. Uh, well, yes, but it, I mean, I know you're not very good with dates. Dates, days. I mean, I miss meetings and appointments all the time because I misread the time. But unlike me. Unlike you, who late. knows? Oh, no, excuse me. Can I just point out? Yes. Do you not, do not forget... We're never going to forget. Up nine hours early. So you, I, I know that you think this is like a, a hall pass, <laughs> which means that no matter how late you are for the foreseeable future, you'll go, I am still nine hours. I've got nine hours on my chit. It's like I, it's a. I was exactly on time this morning. You were, I noticed. Yeah. I, I wasn't. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I made sure, I mean, even though I was slightly delayed in the lane, no, I thought, no, I've got to get there. Get out the way, woman with dogs. <laughs> I hate that you feel that kind of pressure. No, I know you wouldn't. You would still love me if I was late, but that's I would not still the love point. you. I just judge you. It's, I love you, but I just I, judge I you. I told you as well, didn't I? I sent you a photograph because I have finished swimming to Lundy. You have. Which I loved. And oh. I must just say. Thanks, Pam. Apart from loving the cover. Yes, great I did cover. actually read all the words in the middle. That's good. <laughs> um, 
but I really loved it. Loved all the names. This is this oh is my first. goodness! Thank you. I loved all the names, even though what was the odd one? There's an odd one in there, isn't there? Uh, There's an odd one in there, and I can't think what it is, because no, I've read two um, books um, 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 since then. Is it Needle? Anyway. No. Oh, yes, Needle was lovely. Love Needle, yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, I just, I loved that book. Thank I you. really did like it. it. It had so many things in it, so many little characters that I thought were so well-rounded, even though they weren't the main characters. Yeah. There's nothing worse when writers introduce a character and you go, oh, oh, this person's going to suddenly, it's going to all twist around and this person's going to be important. Yeah. And then suddenly, nothing happens to them. And you think, well, why did you even bother introducing them? Yeah, it's diff- I mean, it's difficult. Um, but for me, I'd rather have a smaller cast that you love and care about. Yes. And, and this book really was very much about women overcoming obstacles, women at crossroads in their lives. Yes. Two different women, mm. two different age groups, of as we've already discussed, I know. But I think, People are relating to that. They're saying, yeah, I'm certainly feeling that. When, you know, Harriet has to make a decision about whether to carry on with her marriage. Yeah. Tori about whether to open up her world, uh, world and leave this seaside town in which she's grown up in. Um, and I feel we... I don't know. I think it's something about the time of year as well. Not only the time of our lives, but the time of year. We are sort of looking around thinking, okay, how do I want to go into this next season, this next cold winter? Am I prepped? What do I need? You know, it's a time of change, isn't it? It is. Weirdly... For us gardeners, of course, we're sort of a season leapfrogging ahead. Yeah. So at the moment, I get quite excited, as I mentioned last week. You do get quite we, excited. We, we're planting bulbs. Mm. I mean, we will be planting bulbs. I mean, I've got something crazy like 1,800 tulip bulbs to put in. Flipper dipper. A lot of tulip bulbs. We can't do those till November. But I know when I get out those bulbs from this massive box... And I print off all the pictures of what they're going to look like so that I know exactly where they are. That's clever. Yeah. Um, and I make sure I plant them all in... I mean, I, one year... This is... <laughs> I must have had a lot of time on my hands. I actually planted them in like a balayage... Oh, pen. Ombre. <gasps> uh, so I had all the really dark purple ones and then it went slightly lighter purple, then it went lilac, Beautiful. then it went pink, then it went... And it... Oh, I mean... It didn't actually work because sometimes they get um, labelled wrongly. Right. So the odd red one in between I really bet that annoyed killed me. You. I yes. bet that absolutely <laughs> killed you. But uh, so I don't bother with that anymore. But it, so I'm now thinking about spring. Yeah, lovely. See, so straight away I'm leapfrogging mm. the autumn and thinking about spring. Oh, I like um, that. And you know. Christmas, unfortunately. Did you just say, did you just use the c word on this podcast? Well, because I'm I'm trying to get wreath workshops booked in. Oh, I love your. I'm do, definitely uh, doing one this year. I want yeah. new one at the front door. Yes, and it's so much fun. I loved it. Loved it. We it should do a chit chat one. Oh, that'd be funny. Can I help yes. you? Yes, I could definitely. be your assistant. Yeah, we could have a chit chat Christmas wreath. Let's go pen. Yeah, get it up. Let's get yeah. it booked. Yeah, chit chat Christmas wreath and chit chat. Yes, at the same time. Let's do it and let's just record it. Let's do it. Be hilarious. <gasps> Penny, that's a great idea. Yes, Look, we just came idea. up with that. That's yeah, marvellous. Let's very do that. Good idea. Oh no, I'm definitely in for that. I absolutely loved it. I, I did it with my mum, I remember, and we were just helpless. And I was really proud with the end result as well. Beautiful wreath. Everybody always is. They arrive going, Oh, I'm gonna be useless at this, I'm not at all artistic, I'm gonna be rubbish. And then they are so thrilled when they yeah. walk away with something they are proud to put on their door. Kind of the less artistic you are, the more it feels like an achievement. So it's yeah, really it's sure. really, really cool. I love uh, it, love it. Can we go back to swimming to Lundy? We may. Only Briefly. Because, well, no, only because I'm always very interested in your your career industry. Let's call it an industry. Let's. Okay? Because it's something I don't really know anything about much, apart from I'm the end user, I, I do the reading. Mm. Um, so you've had the publication day. You're doing all your your um, publicity, advertising, uh, book, uh, literary festivals, everything. Yeah. So that obviously must continue. But then, when do you get the feedback? When do you get the feedback as to when do you finally say, "Oh yes, that book did really badly. It didn't sell enough, or it did sell enough," because it just carries on being sold, doesn't it? Well, I wouldn't know about it doing really badly, Penny. I have to say, <laughs> um, I'm very, very lucky in that I get. Well, I don't, but my manager gets continual sort of sales reports and updates weekly. 
Um, and of course, reviews are a way to do that. But you just know because it charts. So my books always chart and do very well. And I feel it just sort of happens. I don't, I don't really understand it. But, but that happens almost immediately, really, within days of it coming out for me. And so you get reviewed by the industry. Mm. So uh, newspapers, press... Magazines, newspapers, press, uh, bloggers, vloggers, um, you know, book talk, all that sort of stuff, uh, Instabook. It's very immediate. Um, so when a, when a blogger or someone is holding a picture of your book and saying, I've just read this one and I give it, you know, five stars and this is how it made me feel and blah, 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 that's just a lovely, you know, physical review, obviously, the same yeah. as anyone writing one. And it happens immediately. And because a lot of books go out as ARCs, advanced reader copies, they're called, which is organised by, again, my management team send out to uh, people who are sort of in my, you know, keen reader club or are, you know, people who, are, who write for magazines and stuff. They get all these ARCs in advance. So they are already primed and prepped if you will so the moment it comes out for publication and everyone else can read it they will then put their reviews out so it's very much um, almost live yeah and obviously people who buy it on audible or it did it come out straight away on audible it comes out i come out globally in all formats on the same day people do it in different ways yeah some people like to launch a hardback and then six months later a paperback which i've tried um, there's many different ways to do it but i believe just in this digital connected world get it out so, who reads a hardback anymore? Well, actually, you say that, but collectors like hardbacks. They, they, they last longer, they look better, they're much more sort of sturdy on your bookshelf. Um, it really hurts when you're reading a hardback <laughs> and you fall asleep. It does. And it bashes <laughs> you on the head. It absolutely does. But I think, yeah, some people love a hardback. And I must admit, I will give hardbacks as presents. Yes, that's a very good point. Mm. That's a very good point. I suppose as well, if I was buying something... That would stay on my coffee table. Exactly. I might buy a hardback. Yeah, so I have hardbacks on my coffee table in the little yeah. snug room you see, yeah. which I yeah, and I kind of dip into. Um, but yeah, it's fun, and it's it's really interesting that personal connection people have to different formats. So some mm-hmm. people, I mean, I am a book lover. I love a book, the feel, the smell, the touch, the everything of a book. However, the convenience of my Kindle. In fact, I now read on my phone, so you yeah. don't need a Kindle to have a Kindle. You need to. No, you need a I've Kindle, Kindle app. Kindle on my so I have Kindle app on my yeah. phone, and it means that comfort I know that wherever I am in the you world, at any point, I can download a new book. Yeah, and I love that. So I do both. I mix and match. I think most of us do, and it's no different, is it, to when you know vinyl was phased out, mm. and then it was going to be you know it, we had everything from eight track cassette to <laughs> you know C ninety cassettes to whatever it was. Um, all the different formats and now it's all digital and I know some people still collect vinyl and they love the look and feel of it and the sound and the authenticity and I get it but we tend to have a mixture Mm. it's no different with books it's that combination but do you remember I posted after the holiday about my idea of a treat is reading in the bath of an afternoon yeah and obviously it's not the same if you listen you have to have a book and so swimming to Lundy looks like I've swum to Lundy with it (laughs) Penny, I had, so I had this funniest experience, I must tell you. I was doing a talk and uh, a lady arrived in a dry robe, <laughs> always a clue, and she sat at the front and she was had a copy of the book and she was sort of eagerly looking at me and I you know, said, hello, hello, before I started and I did my talk about you know, my writing career and what's the main themes of the book and just it's called an evening with and I just sort of do these events pop up and it's it's quite funny I think I think I'm funny <laughs> um and it's just yeah it's great and it's just anywhere for book lovers who want to be and come and spend an hour and a half of their time um and at the end of it she sort of hung back and she said I said how did are you okay she went yeah um I thought you'd swum to Lundy <laughs> so I said no no I no I can barely get in and out of the bath love <laughs> She said, oh, I came because it said Amanda Prowse on Swimming to Lundy. I thought you swam to Lundy. And honestly, she was a world swimmer, brilliant lady. And I said, no, I actually haven't. She said, I thought I'd get tips on swimming and blah, blah, blah. And I said, oh, no, I'm really... I <laughs> oh, felt, no. I felt really, well, I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it. And, and that talk was really good and I enjoyed it. But I'm a, I'm a little bit, I don't know. She said, how can you write about Swimming to Lundy if you've never swam to Lundy? So I said, I make it up. <laughs> because that's kind of my job. Yeah. And she looked at me and she went, oh, you make it up? I said, yeah, make it up. I, you know, I think about what it would be like to swim and yeah. I use the power of imagination and I draw on other people's research and experience. Yeah, there are plenty of authors who do yeah. swim, Libby Page and Veronica Henry, and there's millions of them. Yeah, that's what I do. She went, oh. I just, and I could tell she wasn't convinced that I was going to have done it 
convincingly. And I said, it's almost more of a metaphor than actually about swimming. So I said, what do you like to read? She went, oh, I love the Twilight series. (laughs) I didn't have the heart to tell her that they didn't actually shag a vampire. (laughs) It was made up. So I just went... I love those books too, which I did, but I thought it was so funny. I mean, bless her. She, and, and it made sense. Apparently the poster said Amanda Prowse on Swimming to Lundy. She's like, oh, hello. Get some tips. <gasps> yes, exactly. Yeah. I must just say as well, um, the other thing as a real treat when I go on holiday, I know I don't go very often, but when I go on holiday is always to buy at least three uh, paperback books to read on holiday. From the airport? Yes. Yeah. So I already had Swimming to Lundy. Mm-hmm. I have a confession. What? Because I finished Swimming to Lundy yes. on holiday, mm. um, they had a really, really good library. Oh, I in, love that. Did in, you leave it? Yes. Brilliant. No, so I, I love finished that. it. But what was really funny, and I mean, wouldn't it be amazing, us chatting here on this podcast, in the front of the book, I wrote, I loved this book. I hope you love it too. Oh, Penny. Please follow us on <laughs> chit chat and all that. Text or message me on at the chit chatters. You're shameless. That would be amazing. That would be so amazing. That is so great. I know. One of, one of um, Josh and Ben's school friends um, went travelling straight after school, as lots of kids do nowadays. Lucky things. What's that all about? Travelling. Yeah. We never did that, did we? I know. No, day trip. We were lucky, Pen, yeah. up Clacton. Um, one of their friends went travelling and he sent his mum a picture and he was in a hostel in, I can't remember where it was, I think it was Vietnam or Cambodia and I can't remember exactly, forgive me. And he, there was a bookcase and someone had left a Amanda Prowse book and he took a photo and went, look, it's Mandy's book. And he was, but what was lovely was he felt really connected to home. Yes. Just yes. because someone had put that book there and he thought, oh, it's like they know Mandy too. Of course they didn't. No. But it was, and I thought that's really lovely, isn't it? Well, I do always look out when you're walking along the beach and you've got the loungers and people sitting there. I do always check to see what people are reading. Yeah, me too. Because I'm nosy like that. Yeah, mm. yeah. A lot of people reading the Richard Osman one. Yes. The new Richard Osman one. Yeah. Mm. Um, and I was thinking, oh, if I see someone that's reading them, I'm going to go. Oh. I might literally leap on them. <laughs> I um, had, so we had a very weird experience. Simeon and I were in South Africa. I was doing a book tour. I did, I did several book tours over a couple of years all over South Africa. I loved it. Absolutely amazing. Johannesburg, I loved. One of my favourite places. Um, and we were staying in this rather fancy hotel, which was very lovely. And the weather was beautiful and I was sitting by the pool and there was only one other couple around this pool sat opposite me. And she was reading one of my books. I think it was no. the art yeah, I think it was the art of hiding, if I have to remember. Um and I literally I was going, Simi, Simi. I was obviously I come over all completely unnecessary. I was like, what should I do? He's like, do you want me to go and tell? I was like, no, we'll go and tell him. That'd be so weird. <laughs> she that woman over there. She went, no, that's not happening. But it was really strange, a really strange It feeling. must be really, really strange. Yeah, it is, it's quite weird. I mean it's it it is just the fact that somebody is reading the words that you wrote yes. must be a bit odd. It is odd, Pen. Yeah. But wonderful, wonderfully odd. Absolutely wonderful. I love it. I mean, it. It, in a similar vein, um, Robert and I went up to watch the Mars Singer recording. Oh, yeah. This week. And I have to say, you it is surreal. You've got this person on the stage commanding this entire room, and you feel like going. I gave birth to him. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you want to tell everybody sitting around you. Yeah. He's my boy. Yeah, it's wonderful. It is so bizarre. So bizarre. But it was fun. It was fun. Amazing. I can't wait wait to see it on TV. I can't wait to see it on telly. Are you watching Bake Off? Um, Yes. Mm. Yes, I am. I've still got one to catch up on. Good standard this year. Yes, I think they're... But also they've changed it slightly. I think the stand... They're asking them to do much more difficult things. Agree. I would agree. Because um, some of those early... Well, I don't, I don't want to spoil anything because you've only seen one or whatever. Mm. But I, fa- I agreed. Some of the challenges, I thought, oh, actually, yeah. that's probably what we would usually be getting in week like four or five. Well, and also, um, was it the first week they had to make a... For the technical challenge, they had to do a Battenberg. Yes. But they had no recipe. No. I mean, I think that's really difficult. Mm, probably not if you're a baker. <laughs> yeah, but do you think... I mean, yeah, but if you 
you're a professional baker. Yeah. But they these aren't... I mean, you can't have done every single recipe. But also, that is more a test of memory than skill in a way. Because you've got to remember the recipes rather than can you actually do that thing. Which which bothered me. Because it's not about whether you can make a great sponge or not. Or whether you can make great marzipan or whatever it is. Showing my ignorance. But it's like, you do you remember the recipe right? Well... Maybe but people who have a bad memory or are just, you know... Yeah, but with, with cake... I mean, if you bake a cake, in theory, surely, even if it's in the shape of a Battenberg, that is four different colours of cake, isn't it? I don't know. Yeah, it is. I'm honestly not the person for this conversation It's only with. the marzipan that... I mean, I would probably go, oh, can I remember how to make marzipan? I didn't know you could make marzipan until I saw yeah, that episode. Yeah. Eggs and eggs and icing sugar, isn't it? I had Egg no white. idea. Icing sugar. No, it's not. It's no, it's not. <laughs> it's egg white. It's egg white and ground almonds. What ground? What almonds? Do you That's mean almonds? What almonds. Almonds. It's, it's it's not got an R in it. Almonds. You're saying almonds. That's because how you say it. No, it's almonds. It's al- how do you say almondsbury? Almondsbury. <laughs> no. Obviously. What's wrong with you? No. Almonds. <laughs> Yes. No. It's A L M O D. Yes, I'm aware. S. But that's not how you say it. You say almonds. Well, well I Penny. beg to differ. Do you know what? I beg to differ. Dear listener. Do you know answers on the postcard? Jewelry. Say jewelry. Jewelry. Oh yeah, you say it the same as me. Some 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 people spell it how jewelry. It, jewelry. No. Jewelry. Oh, that annoys me. Does it annoy jewelry. you? Jewelry. Oh. Does it annoy you as someone who can't as much as someone who can't say almond or pumpernickel? Pumpernickel. <laughs> You even rise up when you say that. Pumpernickel. <laughs> like somebody in a an umpa band. Pumpernickel. Do you know, Ben's lovely, lovely partner, Kate, she's at, obviously Ben and Kate are in Canada. I may have mentioned it. Um, she sent me a text going, love the podcast this week. She always listens. She's just brilliant. I really miss, I'm really missing him actually. Are you? Yeah. Um, she sent me this text again, just to let you know. I say pumpernickel too, and I was like, there we go, all's right in my world. <laughs> I thought you were going to tell me she, she's in an umpa band. <laughs> I don't think she's got time to be in an umpa no. band. She's looking after Ben and skiing a lot. Yes. Um, anyway, I've discovered something, talking to Bake Off, on my quest for, I'm getting towards the end of my diet. I've got probably another stone, stone and a half to go. And it's undoubtedly the slowest, and it's undoubtedly the hardest. It is. Which is really weird for me, because I, starting was hard. The bit in the middle, when you're kind of in the process, difficult but manageable. But this last hurdle, I'm finding, you know, I get on the scales and it's like, you've lost half a pound, you've lost one pound. I'm like, oh, you know, I, I'm impatient. And also, I'm really bored with my food. So I, I thought, I need to jazz it up. I need to really dress it up and think about what it is I want to... You just touched your nose. Have I got a bogey? No. Oh. I had an itch. Oh, you know, when someone else touches their nose, I always think they're telling me I've got a bogey. So no. I always go like that just in no. case. Just kind of got that out of the way, Pam. Yeah. Um, so I was thinking, what can I do? What can I do? And I was reading about cultures where they don't really worry so much about breakfast, lunch and dinner. And it's different foods. It's like, what do you have and what do you want to eat? So in some cultures, it's very common to eat fish for breakfast and fish for lunch. And, maybe, you know. and I thought, well, actually, what I really like is something like, I don't know, scrambled eggs. It's not, I don't eat eggs. But if that's what you want, have that three times a day. Mm. So I've been having breakfast three times a day, sometimes four times a day, but it really works for me. It's been a massive boost in my variety. So I'm having a little bit of yogurt, some sugar-free granola. I'm having lots of berries, lots of fruit, maybe a piece of whole wheat toast with some cheese, whatever it is I'm having. And I'm having it for every meal and I'm loving it because I'm not having to think, oh, well, it's dinner. I need to have, you know, a bit of broccoli. I quite often... At lunchtime, we'll have porridge if I haven't had it at breakfast. Yeah. Because I love porridge. I feel I really miss it if I don't have it at breakfast. But we can write those rules, Pen. Yes. But I've never really understood. when You, you know when you go on holiday and you... No. <laughs> I don't go on holiday. You, no, we have to put this right. I mean, I honestly, 15 years, that's mental. It is. Mental. Mm. Um, but when you go on holiday, I love having food <laughs> no i love having food um, but also the fact that you haven't got to make it you know it's really wonderful yeah. it's really wonderful i feel like that if someone just makes me a piece of toast someone I makes know. me a sandwich i'm like oh I know. So it's so nice. your house it's I like would you... i cup of tea i'm like yeah have a yeah. cup of tea um but where did the tradition of what each country has for breakfast start because you watch all the we still don't know what they have in texas no but you watch like <laughs> 
the Germans and the Dutch having cheese, ham, pumpernickel, pumpernickel. <laughs> um, what, what, why do they have cheese and ham? Well, I suppose it's because it, what was locally available, what you could transport, what you could store, what you really? could keep, and what was familiar. Yeah, I mean, but surely that must have been the same here. How come we have? Mind you, saying that we have croissants a lot. Croissant, and not as many the, as Joel and Hannah. No, not as many as the French. True, I don't know. But I don't know. I mean, it, it, it's a weird one, isn't it? Mm, it it is. is a weird one. But I'm, I find food culture absolutely fascinating. Mm. And what I love most is that when people have to migrate or they go to a different country, they take that little bit of food culture with them, and it becomes part of the wider mm. culture where they live. I mean, what would our country be? Without, you know, the various foods. Chicken tikka masala. Well, everything, everything, you know, from all over the world that is now part of our rich and varied diet. Oh, that's... Oh, I know. We're either being burgled or there's a delivery. What's your money (laughs) Um, on? (laughs) Because, is this right? Or have I just made this up? Probably. Apparently, there is no such thing as chicken tikka masala in India. No, I don't think there is. I think there's, there's... different variations of chicken tikka and how you cook but the, but they it's don't how they cook, but there's no such it? thing as curry in india really yeah no curry is a sort of a western you know homogenized curry but a lot of my indian friends were saying that they call it gravy they call their sauces gravy and very often they might not have a sauce their curries might be quite dry and variations in curry region to region is absolutely huge yeah. it is so I fascinating you know a Carolan curry from something you're going yeah. to get from over in the Punjab it's completely different and I love that I love discovering it. I love Indian food I love Indian cultures you know because mm. I suppose here as well I mean we have the same you know Yorkshire pudding in Yorkshire mm-hmm. they have for breakfast sometimes don't they yeah sure yeah, yeah. Um, well when I when I lived in North Yorkshire I can remember having Yorkshire as a starter Yes. Before yeah. you had your sort of met That's up. Right. Penny, yeah. I'm going to go and sort the dogs out. I'm so sorry, darling. I'm just going to pause for one second. Okay. Bear with. Oh. I checked it out. The border is secure. We are not being raided <laughs> by any, you know, unfriendly forces. Vikings. I think they must have seen a bird or smelt a cat. Oh. They're great guard dogs, It's really, they? It's really weird because Pippin, our Labrador, mm-hmm. hardly ever barks. No. The only time you ever hear her persistently bark... Is if she's got a head in a hedge and she's found a hedgehog. Oh, yeah. She will bark at a hedgehog. Do you know, that's really weird. So we, ours, literally, they're, they're, they're quite placid, apart from the snorting, the snoring, the farting and the grunting, which goes on, which I know all our listeners are familiar with, because it's a constant background noise. But at night, we can be sitting quite quietly. I'll be writing, Simeon will be doing some work or whatever. And suddenly they go absolutely crackers to get out the back door. We open the back door and they hair it up to the paddock. And it could be, it's just because there's a hedgehog squeaking. Mm. I can't even hear it. And it'll be a tiny hedgehog, the most almost inaudible noise, but they're so attuned to it. Mm. They're like, hedgehogs are like crack, aren't they? They, are. they love it. <laughs> yeah, they are. But the sad <laughs> thing is, is, apparently more hedgehogs are brought into vets and hedgehog sanctuaries yeah. with dog injuries than oh. anything else. Yeah. Oh, ours, 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 we don't let them near them. I mean, they're, well, pe- they, they're they petrified. literally, I mean, Pippin's never, ever attempted to go anywhere near it you no. know she just stands there and barks at it we've got a hedgehog hotel yes yeah well, funny enough we've well we've got a massive log pile you are you when you say you have a massive log pile <laughs> people don't i think understand. you can see it from space <laughs> well we've also put a few logs in the corner of the garden nice because that's where the hedgehogs live oh that's yeah. a lovely idea. always a good idea if you've got any spare luggage yes hanging around or any sort of wood um you can stack it up in the corner of a garden somewhere quiet Mm. almost definitely you will end up with a hedgehog love that Mm. little hedgehog sanctuary i like it like it again so what are you watching at the moment of the tv have you seen the perfect couple yes funnily enough um i finished it a couple of days ago i loved it um i mean nicole kidman's wonderful isn't she is wonderful Yeah. yeah um She's I'm wonderful not... from the chin down. <laughs> she can't do much with the face anymore. Not judging, but very, very <laughs> yeah, wonderful. She's so expressive. beautiful. She is so beautiful. I thought she was more beautiful before. Yeah, well. Got to be honest. Yeah. You know, but um, yeah, but I, I absolutely loved it. I thought it was wonderful. I did think it was wonderful. I, I loved mostly the dance scene at the beginning. Penny! 
Wasn't it? Do you know what? I almost <laughs> feel it was so genius, such a stroke yeah. of genius. For anyone that hasn't seen it, the opening credits, it's almost like a, a dance routine, like a line dance. Like a flash but like mob. A, a fla- that's the word. It's yeah. a flash mob. And it's brilliant. And they're kind of out of character, but not quite. No. And, oh my gosh, it's it's so... I was waiting Did for it. Did you notice on the last yes. episode... Yeah, I loved it. What's fantastic is in the last episode, the director is in the is in the lineup. Yeah. In her normal sort of clothes. Yeah, with her sort of yeah. head gear. Yeah, it's absolutely yeah. fantastic. I thought that was really good. No, I loved it. It's really clever writing. Yeah. Funny, tongue-in-cheek. Yeah. I didn't quite get it at first. First episode, I thought, oh, okay, that's okay. Yeah. We'll just see where it's going. And it just gets funnier yeah. and more sarcastic yeah. and it's quite sexy. Yeah. And although it was just beautiful. Yeah. And the way it's shot... The characters are really well... Uh, cast. I really loved her well husband. Cast. Yes, Liev Schreiber, isn't it? Yeah, he was. He's so sinister, but yeah. subtly sinister. Yes, something about him. Yeah. It was like, my God, you're awful, but yeah. you're brilliant and you're yeah. compelling, and, I I, know. and you're wonderful to look at I and know. just terrifying. And it I was know. just, oh, yeah, he was very powerful on the screen. Yeah, but he didn't say much. No, no. did he? It was. He just almost. Like, he almost didn't need to. And do you know when it when I first started watching it, I thought, oh, why on earth did he wear those annoying glasses? Yes, but. But I don't know what it was. It was part of the character somehow. Yeah. And when the camera zooms, there's a lot of close-ups of his eyes, yeah. which we don't want to go into, but it's a couple of scenes where it's quite intense. And he, he's, I mean, his acting, all he's doing is blinking <laughs> and staring. And it's like, you are phenomenal. Yeah. And all the children were awful or brilliant in their own yeah. way. It was yeah. just brilliantly cast. I know, it was Absolutely really, amazing. really good. But the other thing that's come back on, series four... Mm-hmm. Slow Horses. I haven't seen the other. Oh, Simeon loves it. Simeon absolutely, absolutely loves it. it. I mean, it, second to Ted Lasso. Which I still haven't seen. Which I cannot... I mean, how wonderful to have all of Ted Lasso to watch. Mm. Oh, my gosh. What's You've it on, Ken? just got to watch Apple. Apple, right, yeah. But I, I did tell a friend this week. She went, oh, I haven't got Apple. I went, you can get three months free... Yes. ...Apple subscription. Apparently so. And binge all of Ted Lasso. Get it done. All of Slow Horses, yeah, and then I promise you, you will want to have yeah. an Apple subscription, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Hello, yes, you just threw that in there. I know, um, because Gary Oldman is absolutely brilliant. You know how sometimes when you get to the second series, it's a bit of a disappointment, bit meh, yeah. Third, even more of a disappointment. Mm. Slow Horses is brilliant. Oh, absolutely pen. brilliant. You should, you so should watch Simeon's it. Simeon's watched it, said it's absolutely yeah. brilliant. He's totally hooked, but he also loved the books. It's Mick Heron, isn't he? Yes. He absolutely loved the books, and he said yeah. that probably it's one of those few series that is as good as the books. Oh, Which right. is real rare praise, isn't I it? Might, has he still got the books? Yeah, he has, yeah. Oh, I might borrow one. Oh, I'll send them to I, I, I just love the whole thing about it. Mm. I mean, and for somebody like me, who normally can never figure out who's done what, and I'm always going... <laughs> So who are they Who's that then? Where did they come from? What? And normally I'm told, well, you fell asleep. (laughs) You you missed the important bit. I remember Joel um, doing a sketch. Was it about watching a video? About watching a video with his dad. Um, and his dad would fall asleep and he'd swap the yes, video. that's right, yeah. And I remember thinking that was so funny. And his dad would be like, oh. And you'd be like, yeah, you fell asleep. And then watching their face, and trying to figure to out. Schindler's exactly, list. something yeah. completely different. Yeah, I funny. thought that was very funny. Yeah. I love it, I love it, I love it. Also, I did watch um, The Apple Doesn't Fall. Now, I've read the book. Did you love it? Um, that pause I tells us all we need to I know. I didn't love it, but... I've got the feeling I read it on holiday and I don't know whether it didn't really hold me particularly. Right. It's kind of it's an un, it's unusual but it I, is unusual. I think I shouldn't have watched it on the back of the perfect couple because that was like bing that was superb. I enjoyed it because I love Annette Benning who plays yes. Marvelous. She is so yeah. captivating. I just adore her and I love Sam Neill who plays her husband mm. who is also amazing. Yeah. Um, so just the fact that they were in it made me want to watch it. It's good. I got into it. It's, it's worth watching. It'll be interesting to see whether I prefer the, the film to yeah. reading the book. Definitely. Um, yeah. At book club, we quite often say, oh, as a jolly night, you know, not a book club night, as a jolly night, let's watch the film of one of the books that we That's a great read. idea. And I remember we had watched, we had read Atonement. Oh no, I pen. <laughs> it killed me. And then we watched no. Atonement with Kira Knightley. 
Um, we had 12 women in a room all going, oh no, oh my God, oh dear, the entire two hours. And completely different. Oh, it, what, it was as if it wasn't the same thing. Yeah, yeah, completely different. There was a lot of looking intently. Yes. Into the camera. And a bit of bum bum, I remember. Yeah. A bit of bum. Yeah, it was... Um, no, it didn't do it for me, the film. Um, but the book is something else. It was quite interesting because I was listening to uh, the Rest is Entertainment podcast. Yeah. I like Richard Osman. But I'm very sorry, Richard. I have tried to read the third, Thursday mm. What's It Do Da. Mm. And I've read one and I spent the whole time going, that's ridiculous. That's <laughs> ridiculous. Oh my God, that's ridiculous. Uh, other people I know absolutely adore them. My sister galloped through them. Mm. She could not wait to read the next one. Loved them. Mm. Cannot wait because there's the film coming out yeah. with all these incredible people in it. Mm. And I'm, I'm hopeful that I will prefer... The film. You might, yeah. I might. Mm. I might. But it was he's a very lovely, lovely man. I yes. know Joel's met him a few times and mm. he says what a lovely, genuinely humble, nice man he is. I had I had a meeting with my agent in um, a restaurant in London and he was on the next table, which was very, very close to ours, <laughs> with his agent. And we were sort of sat it was always like we're at the same table opposite each other with that. So we were sort of like, hello, hello, hi. Yeah. And obviously our agents knew each other, so they were like, hi, hi. And it was just this really awkward. I kept thinking, hmm, he's very tall, isn't he? He is but, very um, tall. What are we having? Oh, I'm going to have what Richard Dawson's having. So basically, um, his legs were under your <laughs> table. <laughs> but it was really weird because I can hear his agent going, so yeah, we've made an approach to, and my agent's going, so what we've done, it had the same, exactly the same. Although his movie is obviously happening, mine's still in the works. So yeah. <laughs> but it was very interesting because he was saying that. Although he has been invited to set, he basically, it's nothing to do with him now. Yeah. And I thought, how on earth can you just go, okay, that's your Because you have to, Pen. Well, I suppose you do, but... If you're going to be precious about it, or you're going to feel upset if they change the location, the cast, the ending, the, but then you can't do it. My, I, I was given some advice, because obviously we're having these conversations in very, very early stages, um, and others. But it's like, if you are concerned about that, then it's don't do, don't it. do it you literally have to hand it over like literally waving your child off at nursery and trusting that the people on the other side of that door are going to do a good job with them until you pick them up again yeah i suppose i suppose but i he was very sort of fine with it you know and um marina hyde who does the rest is entertainment with him was going oh really you know do you are you sure you don't want to you know have any sort of input and he went no no that's over to them now they're really good at it that's exactly. their job and that's exactly that's what, what I, I feel exactly the same on a much smaller smaller scale mm. it's like people say do you get involved with your covers do you get involved no, yeah, I none of it because there are people who are experts in their job give them the freedom to do their job the last thing they want is some uninformed amateur with a small opinion like me going oh should it be pink you know they don't no. care they don't, they don't want to hear it they've no. obviously been through the process to come up with what they've come up with Trust them to do their job. I yeah. absolutely believe that in every walk of life. Yeah, there's nothing. Worse. Yes, yeah, you are right. You are right. I often am. Yes. <laughs> I mean, as as I was last week watching Joel do this recording for our singer, and he has this wonderful stylist. She is a really lovely person, and I saw the row of suits hanging up on his in his dressing room, and I thought, oh my goodness me and you look at them you think what was she thinking but do you know what he gets up on that stage and he rocks those suits it's part and of they, it it's part of it yeah it is part of it he gets more questions about his suits than he does about anything else but also it's part that's his mask literally yeah. that's his costume that's yeah. what he gets in to perform to do that job yeah because when you meet joel in real life when you chat to joel he's not performing he's not working no, obviously so it's like like rob the fireman <laughs> you get into that uniform and you become i that. wish <laughs> <laughs> or out of it hello <laughs> um but you know you do don't you yeah you must feel yeah. the same when you put on your filthy cap and your dirty muddy yeah. boots yeah you know that you're going out to work right yeah and then when i come here every morning and i actually put on clean trousers did and you a clean jumper your jumper's very yeah, nice yeah 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 very nice um although i was asked why do you have armour written across your front? <laughs> and, and it I went, says, it's amour. Amour. Oh. It's French. I said, it, it means love. It's lovely, I like oh, it. Oh, right. Very After nice. After you pen. stared at my chest for 10 minutes. Oh, that old chestnut. Out. Sorry, just reading that. What's that? Just staring at your melunas. <laughs> your melons. 
<laughs> oh, Pen, there we are. End of another episode, my lovely. That was so nice chatting to you today. I have loved every minute of it. I think we've covered everything. I think in we have. the world. Do you know? <laughs> I just, I just love our little chit chats. Uh, it's not just a clever name. I love our chit chats. And I love that everyone joins us for our chit chats. It's wonderful. Thank you so much for listening. As you know, every Friday is when a new episode drops. Please tell your friends, share us, get the word out there. You can always catch up with us or send any questions on our Insta page, which is at the Chit Chatters. Thanks, Pen. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.